I want to welcome you to Santa Fe High School. I am Lawson Brown, the Assistant Principal for Administration here at Santa Fe. In the absence of our principal, Dr. Wright, and our other Assistant Principal for Curriculum, Mr. Mac Rindek, I want to welcome you to spending this evening with us and sharing this opportunity to share your thoughts about the opportunities for Alachua County. Now I'm going to put it in the hands of our Public Information Officer, Ms. Jackie Johnson. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much, and thank you very much to all of your staff. They've been so hospitable in helping us get all set up. We really appreciate it. I do want to take a, a few moments to introduce some of the folks who are here. Again, we are waiting on a couple of people who are, got caught up in that accident. So we have three of our board members here. Dr. Rockwell and uh, Ms. Certain could not be here tonight, uh, but we have our school board vice chair, Dr. Leonetta McNeely. We have board member, sure, absolutely. <laughs> board member Kay Abbott. And board member Diane McGraw. Our Deputy Superintendent Donna Jones is in the audience. Uh, we also have our Chief of Equity, Inclusion, and Community Engagement, that is Dr. Antoinique Edwards. And you'll be hearing from her in just a moment. Also, our Director of Construction and Planning, that is Suzanne Wynn. She will also be talking a little bit tonight before we hear from you. And before we go any further, I want to turn things over to Dr. McNeely to make a few comments really about why we're here and why this is happening. Dr. McNeely? Good evening, everyone, and welcome as you have been shared with already. I want to echo Mrs. Johnson and thank you all for being here tonight. And I'm going to keep my comments brief because the point of this meeting is for us to hear from you about district-wide rezoning. It's something that we haven't done in a very long time. In fact, the last time that we did comprehensive rezoning in our district was in 1983. Wow. Of course, a lot has happened in the last 40 years with people moving into and out of and around Alachua County. But our zone lines haven't kept up with all the changes. We have done more limited um, rezoning in the last 40 years. For example, when a new school has opened, we have done this um, limited rezoning, but it hasn't been enough. As a result, we've got a lot of schools that are very overcrowded and quite a few that are significantly under enrolled. Neither is good for students. So the board has made the tough but necessary decision to rezone schools across the district. Ultimately, we have a responsibility to do what's best for the children in our district. We don't know what the new zones will look like or how many children will be affected by the rezoning. That's because we wanted to hear from parents and the community before any new maps or zone lines are drawn. Already we've had quite a few parents tell us how much they love their child's current school and that they don't want them to move. I understand that completely. However, some change can cause anxiety and unfortunately, not everyone is going to be happy with the final plan, whatever it looks like. But I do want you to know that all of us, including the board members and the district staff, are committed to making the transition as smooth as possible for any students who will be going to a 
different school for the 24-25 school year. At this point, I'm going to stop talking and let Mrs. Johnson share the plans for tonight. But please know that we are here to listen and will very carefully consider everything that you share. I know I speak for all of our board members who are here tonight and the staff when I say that we are committed to doing the right thing for all of our students. Mrs. Johnson. Uh, before we start taking public input, we are going to have a brief presentation for you that includes current enrollment data, uh, it includes a rezoning calendar, it includes some information about facility capacity at our various facilities, uh, and then we'll begin hearing from you. So once the presentation is over, uh, I will let you know when it's time for people who want to address the board to come up and sort of line up in this area behind the, the microphone. You will have three minutes to share your thoughts with the board. We've got a timer up here, and it will tell you how much time you have left when you get up to speak. Uh, when your time is up or when you've finished speaking, Dr. McNeely will then ask the next person to come up and speak. If you have input that you would like to share, but you don't want to come up to the microphone, that's absolutely fine. We have QR codes. We are recording this meeting, and we will be posting it on our rezoning website, which is sbac.edu slash rezoning. You will also be able to find the presentation here. You will also be able to find the frequently asked questions. And when we do have proposed maps, proposed zone lines, those will also go on that same website. One last point I do want to make. As Dr. McNeely said, no new maps have been drawn, no, not even proposed maps. There is, is nothing that has been drawn at this point. The point was to hear from the community first, and this is the fifth community input session we've had in the last, I'd say, about four or five weeks. Over the summer will be the process for starting to draw those plans. So what you are going to see tonight and what, what is in the packet that you all would have gotten, those are current numbers, those are current enrollment numbers, and those are current capacity numbers. So I just want to make sure that that part is really clear, that this is what we have currently. This does not represent any sort of proposed maps or zone lines. So at this point, I am going to turn things over to Dr. Edwards. Yes. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Um, I'm Dr. Edwards, and as Jackie has said, as Dr. McNeely has said, um, it's so important for us to be able to hear from you as the community as we move forward in this process. Um, one of the areas that falls under my umbrella is the zoning department or the Office of Student Assignment. And so we're here today to talk a little bit about why we want to rezone. First and foremost, the last rezoning, as Dr. McNeely had shared, was literally 40 years ago in 1983. So it's really important for us to look at what changes have taken place across time uh, in the last four decades. Uh, we know that we have changes affecting attendance since then to include population growth, new developments that have happened within the community, migration within our county, school choice options, when we start looking at the differences between our magnets, our charters, our voucher programs, all of those programs and opportunities that exist within um, within our county are really important as they impact what happens in our public school sector. Also, 20 of our 36 schools are what we would deem to be overcrowded at 90% or more of the seats being filled at those schools. So it's really important that we look at that. 4,800 seats are empty district-wide. And so I know that I saw a couple of faces here that we've seen at previous meetings. And so you may note that that number is different than what we shared in our first um, one or two meetings. And Ms. Wynn was going to talk a little little bit about that as well, just so that we make sure that everyone is clear um, on what the differences are in the information that we've communicated. Facilities and operating funds, we want to ensure that they're being used effectively throughout the district. And we want to ensure that we are focusing on operating funds being used effectively throughout the district, right? And so that we can focus on our teaching and learning. And so the question has arisen on many occasions, why not build 
more schools. If we have overcrowding, can't you guys just build a new school where the crowding takes place? In the process of building a new school, millions of dollars goes into that process. And so it is really expensive. Facilities funding for us is very limited, and so we have to take that into consideration. There are also some limitations that are set forth by our state that we have to bring into consideration. The strain of our core facilities and lack of space um, with the infrastructure. All of these factors um, have to come into account when we're making um, considerations on how we move forward. This will um, become a little bit clearer as um, Suzanne Wynn comes to share uh, information. And you can see the beautiful pictures on the right um, are photographs of uh, what we're doing right now as we are remodeling and building up Westwood Middle School. And we want for those kinds of facilities to be available for all students in Alachua County. But we have to make sure that we are exercising um, our funding in the best way possible to support that. Ms. Wynn? Good evening, everyone. I'm excited that you're all here. We're looking forward to hearing from you. One of our main goals is to provide high quality learning experiences. So I'm going to be sharing some of our existing conditions in our district as we go forward with rezoning. At this time, I'd like to explain the change from the 5,400 vacant seats district-wide to the 4,800. Uh, vacant seats district-wide. That was my mistake. I double counted Hawthorne Middle High School's capacity of 600 two times. So overall in the big picture, it's not going to affect our rezoning process, but I did want to explain the reason for that change for all of you who are tracking all these meetings. This chart represents the utilization of our schools, and this first slide is for our elementary schools. I'm gonna follow up these charts with maps that reflect these colors as well and percentages. This is the percent utilization that we have at our schools. Anything 90% or above is represented in red. Yellow is 85 to 90% utilization and anything below 85 is represented by green. Utilization is basically our enrollment divided by our school's core core capacity, our permanent capacity, not including portables. When we have portables at schools and we have overcrowded core facilities, we create situations where we have our children eating uh, lunch starting at 9.30 in the morning. We have a difficult time finding space for all of our staff to be in administration, to, be, um, to have a home, basically. Um, media centers are overcrowded, hallways for middle and high schools can be very crowded, things like that. So um, that's something that we care about are the quality learning experiences for our children. Uh, we mentioned the overall empty seats district-wide. In our elementary school, we have 20, 2,522 empty seats. That includes our three vacant schools, which are Duval, Prairie View, and Terwilliger campus. We have 942 empty seats that don't include our vacant schools. Some of our schools are combination schools, so they are included on one chart and not the other. So we've included Oakview in the middle school, even though they house fifth grade. And so we have the same information for middle school. We have 1,355 empty seats district-wide for our middle schools. And we have the information for our high schools. That's 940 empty seats district-wide for our high schools. Even though these centers house uh, special student populations, there is not a specific zoned area attending these schools. We, we included these, uh, this information as well. So these are the maps that I was describing earlier that show you basically geographically our utilization district-wide. For the most part, we have our overcrowding situation in the western part of our county and the eastern part of our county, we, as well as our newer schools, our older schools and under-enrolled schools are typically more in the eastern part of our county. We have the same information for middle school. 
and for high school. So this next set of maps is showing you that we have captured all of our data for our students, where they live, where they go to school, you know, that, that information has been gathered. On these tables, we've provided you the information of the total number of students that are zoned to that area, as well as the students that are attending. And to use an example for Oakview Middle School, on these maps, we have divided the numbers. The number of fifth graders that are attending Oakview Middle School is on the elementary school map, and that number is 133 of the 974 students that are zoned to that school. And the remainder of the students are located on, are identified on the middle school map. So that's what we've done when we have a combination school. Each student's address is represented by uh, a dot, and this is a very, very large scale. But you can see, you know, where the clusters of our students live. This next set of maps are our active development reviews. These are developments that are currently under construction or projected to be built out within the next three years. We work together cooperatively with Alachua County and all of our cities to gather this data. And basically every couple of years we reevaluate our student generation multipliers to come up with a prediction of how many students those developments, single family or multi multifamily, will generate. So this information has been captured and has been updated and is continually updated and this will be included and captured in our rezoning process. Mm -hmm. The majority of our development continues to happen in the western portion of our county, of, in Alachua County, the city of Newberry, the city of High Springs, the city of Alachua, um, as you can see represented by the, the dots and there's a chart that's been provided to show the number of students that we're expecting to be generated by these developments. So this is the same information, the development, uh, geographic location of the developments don't change. The number of students generated will, depending on whether they're elementary, middle, or high school, the location doesn't change. This is just showing the same information, the same uh, development location with the middle and the high school zones. And then this information that shows the number of students that we're expecting to be generated. I've combined onto one slide there from each of the three maps that you just saw. Thank you very much. Just a quick run through of the calendar for the rezoning process. As you can see, we've had four community input sessions so far. This is our fifth. Then we move into the next portion. Uh, as you can see, on August 16th, the plan is for proposed, and again, I stress, proposed maps and zone lines to be presented to the school board and to the community on August 16th. And basically, the next morning, we will post all of that information on that rezoning website. Then what happens is we have another series of community input sessions between August 16th and October 17th, where the difference is we present to you what the maps look like, what the proposed maps look like, and get your input on those proposed maps. September 19th, the process of adopting any new lines uh, begins, but again, even during that process, changes can happen, those plans can be tweaked. So that starts with a regular board meeting on September 19th, it's what we call the first reading. October 17th is a public hearing. The sole purpose of that meeting is to get public input on what has been proposed, and then the goal is for the board to approve a new plan on November 7th. But again, these maps do not take effect until the 2024-25 school year. Does anybody have any questions at this point before we start turning it over for public input? Yes, ma'am. Do you mind coming to the mic? The reason is we're recording it and we want to make sure that whoever watches the recording Here's what the question was so they <laughs> so the answer makes sense. On High Springs Community School, a couple of slides back, they were included in both the middle school and elementary school. It says in the middle school though concurrency that says it's K through 8. Shouldn't that read 
um, like five through eight or six through eight for that for those expected seats, and then the other one should read K through five or K through four, because it's being counted again twice. But it, it's different numbers. But you didn't specify which grades you're counting for which seats. These are seats that are basically projected for. It's a school that's K through eight, though, like you've indicated on the middle concurrency. Right. However, on the elementary concurrency, you didn't indicate which seats are being, is that K through eight, or is that K through four or five? Is the middle one five through eight, or four through eight, or six I through eight? I apologize for the confusion. The High Springs Community School, as you're indicating, is uh, K through eight. The numbers that are reflected there are the elementary students in that first chart that are projected to be generated from new development. So that would be K through five elementary students. Mm -hmm. And the middle school students that are projected from the new development, grades six through eight are 12 students. Okay, so six through eight, okay. That school is K through eight, but the students that are being represented there are mm -hmm. elementary school. Mm -hmm. In the elementary school table, that's 23 and the middle school students are 12. Okay, and I wanted to ask that because you had said you accidentally double counted another school that was over multiple grades. That was the capacity, basically. This is referring to our prediction to estimate the number of students that are gonna be generated from new development. I actually think you're really underestimating because they've approved 2,000 new homes in High Springs. There's two different categories of development. There's planned unit developments that can happen over a period of 20 years which is what you're referring to, and then there's active development. Active development is something that's in construction now or projected to be completed within the next three years. This is for active development only. Because one thing I think that is confusing about planned unit developments that build out over 20 years, folks tend to think that all of the students that are projected from that large development are all coming at once. When in actuality, we have students migrating out of the school and into the school, and that's a development that's built out in phases. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your question. All right. So at this point, we are going to turn it over to you. Uh, anybody who would like to speak to the board, if you would come on up and just line up, and you can get behind the microphone. And again, you'll have three minutes to speak. It always takes one brave soul to get it started. <laughs> my name is Ryan Green. Uh, my kids go to High Springs. Um, I guess a couple things is, like the uh, other lady just said, we got like 2,000 homes coming in, um, High Springs already being planned. It won't take them 20 years to do it. Um, I live close to where DR Horton just built, and I think they did 500 units over there in like four years. So anyways, they'll, they'll build them quickly. So I guess my problem would be with rezoning is it's gonna be a short-term fix for a long-term problem. Um, so rezone and then the resources for busing kids here and there. Uh, I know we've had, uh, um, financial um, stress on on that as well. I think a couple years ago, um, the, commu the commuting the children around and the bus drivers and all that had been a, a major uh, issue. Um, so then the other point would be if I've got kids that are multiple ages, which I do, uh, the reason why we live in High Springs is because you have an elementary and a middle school connected, and so they can go home together, they can, uh, they're at the same school, they get out by the same time, so it's very convenient for us. We do have a house in Alachua that we chose to, to leave to go to High Springs just because it was more uh, convenient for us as parents. So the other thing that I would also raise, and there's probably others out here, High Springs specifically is a really good school with really good teachers, and I don't, I can't speak for the other the other schools, but that would be a major uh, 
issue I, I would feel like for for anybody going to those schools or having to be told okay you're going to go here um, the Mabane has 43 percent capacity right now which they're going to get in you know a higher volume over a very quick time so they're not going to be used to having all these new kids in and stuff so that would be something that I would I would think you would want to um, also think about as far as uh, facilitating more children um, so the the other I guess issue is that this has been um, something that you know Alachua County has been growing for a while now um, and you would want to to plan something I know we got a three-year ish or plan but something that, that's going to facilitate more because the county is going to keep growing so thank you Mrs. yes ma'am thank you mayor Marlowe we know you but you still have to give your name Thank you, Board. Jordan Marlowe. I appreciate it. I was going to let everybody else go first, but everybody's a little shy tonight, so we'll help get it started. Uh, I don't really have anything new to say, um, except that I would encourage you guys, you're doing a great job listening to the community and moving around. I think that as you get closer to that date where you have some proposed maps, it might be worthwhile to meet with municipal municipalities and those boards in joint meetings, because I think that we're missing some opportunities to partner together. I think that there are some things things that the municipalities that might be able to bring to the table. I don't know what those are. I'm never the smartest guy in the room, but I know that if I give the chance for other people who are smarter to talk about those kinds of things, who knows what we could find. Um, I think that, you know, you, you know my, my uh, hope for Newberry is that we make minor adjustments and that we proceed that, you know, the residents that live in municipalities have the first right to those seats in those schools. Um, before we do anything else and, and I believe and I, I hope that those numbers are are forthcoming soon but I think that you know we have a lot of folks that are being bused to us in Newberry and if we make some minor shifts that there's some schools that are under capacity that we can take the heat off of Newberry and I also think that eventually the gentleman's right the growth in, in western Alaska County I don't know that we're going to be able to stop that you know we have a, a, a Tallahassee legislature that that is very much about property rights and i'm a property rights guy myself but that does mean that when people come to us if they have a right to build it's really hard to to deny them that right to build so we are going to have to look at some new structures and I, I still i hope that newberry elementary school we can go back to that half cent sales tax and see how we prioritize those and i hope that we can get newberry elementary school moved up that line because they are the most over capacity of any school and they need the most relief they need it now not in 2030 so i'll end there i don't know if i got one minute but i'm not going to here to use the whole time i hope i got somebody else with some gumption to come on up here now <laughs> thank, thank you. you thank you so much Hi, I'm Christina Arbin. Um, my kids, all three of them go to High Springs, have been graduated through to High Springs. I and myself went to High Springs in 1983, which was, I guess, the last rezoning. Um, like Mr. Green stated, this rezoning, moving from here to there, switching, it's just not gonna work. Like they said, houses can be built fast. There's companies coming in, there's stores, there's restaurants, everything, it's growing. We have to grow with it. So in order to do that, we need to build a new school. I'm not sure where, there's plenty of trees and acres and land along the way. Um, I don't know why it can't be purchased. I know limited funding was mentioned. Uh, but if it's been 40 years, my question is, where's the 40 years of taxes? Because Lachlan County taxes is extremely high. I, I pay quite a bit there, and it's extremely high. So where are the tax dollars going? Ta teachers don't get paid enough, in my opinion. So I'm not sure where the funding for building has went. Mm -hmm. That High Springs Community School that used to be High Springs Elementary and High Springs Middle School, um, we've gotten portables. 
it's probably the same air condition. It's probably the same. There's so much that has not been put into that school. So my question is the funding. Where's the funding gone? And I don't think moving kids around from place to place to place is gonna fix things. Um, part of the reason High Springs, I feel, is so successful is because of the teachers that are excellent and amazing. The kids are safe and secure there. They know that, they have confidence, they are encouraged. It's a great group of teachers and I feel like that's why it's so successful and on the verge of being overcrowded. And I, I hope that um, the shuffling and the rezoning and all can be rethought, figured out, and and uh, not not done in a way to be harmful to the students, which I know you said is your number one priority to do what's best for them. Um, so hopefully everything can be looked at and considered and the best decision be made. Thank you for your comments. You. Don't be shy, please come. We wanna hear, thank you. <clears throat> All right, my name is Morgan Smith, and I'm currently a senior at Buholtz High School, and I'm also a four-year member of the Academy of Entrepreneurship. Currently, I serve as our school's our school store's spirit spot. I'm the chief operating officer, which is also run through the academy. And the academy has helped me find a place where I belong and has provided me with a sense of community when I had not had that in a very long time. Throughout my years in the academy, it's clear that they strive to improve school spirit and provide a multitude of service opportunities. Through an, an organization called DECA, we compete in various events, and I've competed all four years, and I can effectively say that it's changed my life for the better. There are many different events, one of those being chapter projects, which we are allowed to conduct senior year. My chapter project was financial literacy, where we taught elementary, middle, and high school students the basics of important financial topics. We participated in junior achievement at Rawlings and Metcalf, where we formed special connect connections with the children. And the academy has always participated in junior achievement and is a wonderful op opportunity for students to become better at public speaking and allows them to improve connections with the community. Another project being March for Minds, which is an annual walk for mental health awareness along with the food drive for B students that behold in need. This year at ICDC, our International DECA Conference, I had underclassmen approaching me about their ideas for future chapter projects, full of optimism and ambition. It would truly be heartbreaking to see my peers have something I was fortunate to be involved in for all four years of high school stripped from them in the blink of an eye. Please consider all of these individuals that are involved with this program and how much of a positive impact our academy places on Buholtz. And I would not be standing here today talking to you if it weren't for your, my wonderful advisors, Mr. Hoffer and Mr. Shea. So I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, hearing our voices. Uh, I'm Xin Zhao as a parent of um, an 11th grader and a second grader. That's okay. Oh. It's being rec recorded. I miss your name. Um, who are um, both in magnet programs. I would like to echo the comments made earlier uh, during the previous sessions um, on the significant and positive impacts of ma magnet programs on students active learning, engagement, um, and achievements, and their contributions to diversifying educational programs on campus, um, and creating vibrant curriculums, as well as all the teachers' dedication and great efforts to foster student learning, critical and creative thinking, and professional skill development. Removing or distracting the current magnet programs will do likely nothing but damaging student learning and teacher initiatives. So just wish that we could have more diverse, uh, rigorous, and enhanced magnum programs in more schools to meet the needs of our children and students. 
Well, I understand um, the main reason for rezoning, and I really appreciate the opportunity for feedback uh, during the decision-making process. I would really like to encourage the school board to consider carefully the core value of quality education and the future of our, of our school, teacher, student, and parent community. We all want to see the success of our students and our schools. And we all want to reward our teachers for their devotion, passion, and care for our children and their students. And yes, we share the common goals of providing better and sustainable learning environments and resources for our future generations. Um, it would be rather disappointing and disheartening if the rezoning was heading to a direction that ended up being detrimental to quality education, the spirit of our teachers and students, and the future of our community. Thank you for listening. And thank you for continuing to come. Thank you. Sorry, I thought it was just for questions earlier, not just commentary. Uh, my name is Sage. My daughter goes to High Springs. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out, which apparently my husband reviewed the other four um, meetings you guys had, no one brought up the fact of the reason why you're having overgrowth in the western and not the eastern part. And ultimately, it's not necessarily about, oh, just growth in attendance. I don't know if you guys really realize that the reason you're having more growth in the western part is not only are people drawn by, you know, what they can afford for a house, you know, finances always affect that. They're moving into the areas that are A, rated schools. They are not in the schools that are F rated schools. When I moved to this county in 2019, we picked High Springs because it was an A, B rated district. Buchholz being the best, Newberry being kind of tied with High Springs, and I saw that the teachers were migrating north to High Springs, so I said, I'm gonna follow the teachers, and I'm gonna move to High Springs rather than Newberry. And we did not move to Hawthorne or anything on the eastern side because those are horribly rated schools. That is why you don't have people there. It might actually entice people to move to them to raise the ratings of the schools, to do other things, to get the grades up, to invest in the students and the teachers there. That might draw more people to move eastern into the county because they are moving west because there's better educational opportunities for their children. That is why it's happening and I don't know if you guys really realize that and redrawing the lines just because there's some empty seats doesn't fix the fact that those F schools are F schools and you're going to have people like me and these other parents who've got kids at these great rated schools getting redistricted and redrawn to F schools. <laughs> it's just going to be dismal. That's really the big reason why we are where we are. They moved to the High Springs for the you know, convenience of uh, the timing for picking their kids up and um, like I moved in order for, to have my kid have a great educational opportunity. We came from South Florida, where there's actually quite a lot of really good schools. We came right from the, um, the actually where that Margaret Stoneman Douglas area, that shooting was, we were living right down the street from that. And we moved right after that happened. So we moved up here because it's a great area and there's a lot of good things you know, that are happening for the schools, but if we're gonna re redraw the lines and if we're inside the High Springs city limits and that's no guarantee we can go to a really good school that we're districted for, and we're gonna end up being sent to a school that's not rated great, it's not gonna entice us to stay. So I thought you guys might wanna think about the fact that it's not just the lines, it's not about just empty seats. Those seats are empty because no one wants their kid in an F rated school. There's gotta be something you can do to bring it up and um, I don't know, maybe you guys should look back at the old Miami-Dade County things for the way they grew, because no, even though everyone denies it, every county is growing the same way Miami-Dade County grew over the last 100 years. And no one's paying attention to those patterns because that's what's repeating everywhere. Thank you so much. My name is Fang. I come here the first time. <laughs> That's, uh, every time so I just uh, express my opinion. So uh, uh, 
already a lot of parents and the kids talk about the magnet program. Uh, for the past three times, I always uh, said uh, I appreciate the education board support the magnet program in in Alachua County, and the kids has a lot of opportunity to go to the different. Uh, Area that's their interest, uh, uh, such as my my son in the robotic program. They they got the support from the education board for the past uh, two years. Go to the world competition, and uh, I know that the um, Bill High School have two students got the uh, science. That's the top twenty in in this country, and will probably represent the USA to the world competition again. So all this is uh, and the work, uh, the education board people, the parents and the school and the, all the kids uh, work hard for those. And uh, so the point that I, I, I would like to see, preserve the good uh, magnet program in the current schools, like uh, Lincoln Nice and Program, and uh, the Bill Hall, and uh, the Bishop, and all those uh, good uh, magnet program, and uh, add uh, some, some, some magnet program in, the, in some schools. They, they, they need that to increase the enrollment uh, rate. So that's my point. Thank you for listening. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name's uh, Brandy Dunn. It's N-U-N-N. -N. Um, my daughter, uh, fortunately, is also a student at High Springs Community School, and I just wanted to tag off of what, um, I think her name was Sage, or mm -hmm. Sage, yep. Um, so I actually grew up here. I uh, went to Hidden Oak, Fort Clark, and Buholtz, um, and graduated and went to the university. I'm very thankful to be in Alachua County, um, student. However, I agree with her. I know all those schools that are underutilized um, are because they are poor rated schools. They have been since I was the early 80s and even before that. And so I feel that we don't want our kids to have to be shipped to schools that are not um, A and B rated schools. So I'd really ask you guys to look hard at the rating of these schools that are underutilized and the schools that are overutilized in their rating prior to making those decisions for these students because I feel it'll be um, detrimental to their education um, and also um, um, some mental health. I feel we go, are dealing with a lot with a lot of these um, middle schoolers. I have a preteen, she's going into middle school next year, and so I just feel that that should be considered. So thank you very much for your thank time. Thank you, Ms. Dunn. Hi, my name is Annelise Britz. Um, I have one child in High Springs uh, Community School and one that's in the Magnet Program, the Cambridge Program in Gainesville High School. We live in High Springs. Um, as you can hear from my accent, I'm not from the States. So one of the reasons we moved to the United States was for better ed education for my kids. We moved from South Africa. When we moved here, we moved into a county that has good schools. We moved into the area of that county that has good schools. I'm going to be extremely upset if you move my kids that I've moved all the way from South Africa to a good school into a school with a C or a D grading. Like Sage and the other lady said, those schools are empty for a reason. And the reason is not because everyone is just migrating west for the, for the good of it. They are migrating to get to the schools that has a better education system, better teachers, and where we get the best um, cohesive environment between the teachers and the parents. So your problem 
is not in mm -hmm. just rezoning everything it's going is going to fix the problem that's not going to fix the problem you need to work on the teachers in those schools when we moved to high springs we specifically looked at where the rezoning map or the zoning map is for Mabane because we were very adamant that our kids would not go to that school because it has a lower grading. So then we also, you talk about um, rezoning. I want to find out from you guys how is this going to affect magnet programs? Um, because there have been some buzzing going around that you try to sort of get rid of some of these magnet programs, which I don't really understand. Um, but will the magnet programs be affected by the rezoning? Because, I mean, some places like um, re the REACH program in Fort Clark is specifically just for kids that is within the Fort Clark zones at this stage. So how will those things be, be affected? And then um, just a suggestion. You say that you want to just slap BAM 2024 to 25. Everyone needs to just move into the new schools. We all know that kids are fragile, um, some more than others. Um, but isn't it maybe a better idea to say from 2024, if you have done the rezoning, let the sixth graders, the kindergartners, and the freshmen start to go to the new schools and let the other kids that's already in those schools where they are at that stage not be moved out into what should have been their new zoned schools. So that way you don't get um, an upheaval in their academic um, structure and they can actually finish out the school years with their friends. Thank you so much. I think the chairperson last um, meeting um, input session, she explained that that is not the intent to get rid of our magnet programs. So I didn't want you to leave tonight thinking that that's the, okay. the, pro the process. It is absolutely not. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. Uh, this is D uh, David. Uh, you guys possibly recognize me. I attend all the uh, sections. Just to follow the, uh, the questions, you see the Buho students still come here and talk about it. I already told you two times what's the reason. It, all the reasons due to that workshop. I think uh, you guys all show your opinions. Um, it's not a rumor. It's because, you know, the workshop is open to people. So I talk, specifically I talked with Tina. I said, well, maybe you guys should make a, a public uh, statement regarding showing your support about the magnet program. Otherwise, you see, every section, people still come here for it. Yeah. Um, I basically want just to, I, I think a couple of parents really make good points. It's like, okay, for we do resuming, what's the purpose? What's the purpose? It's really not a simple draw line. Every parent here, really care about like how does this resume can give our high quality education. So the parents already show that uh, uh, and also we also realize this uh, resuming is a very complicated situations. But just to, you know from that magnet program workshop and also recently uh, regarding for that one, I appreciate all three of you made wise decisions that keep Ms. Andrews as the superintendent. For, for me, I really don't know why you guys put that on the agenda. Like you, wa you want to do the rezoning without superintendent, a qualified superintendent. That's for me, it's really hard to believe like how we actually run this process. Then regarding the high quality, I think our students, our school currently face three challenges, okay? The first one is really the behavior issues. Okay, I appreciate, I see on May 3rd, you guys already made the first step. Okay, um, I don't, I have time limit, so I don't want to talk details, but I appreciate that, I see, but I think that's not enough. The behavior issue is really a challenge so far. We definitely see it due to a pandemic, but I can give you a couple examples what happened to uh, Lincoln. Second one, transportation. Okay, we are short of drivers. 
But more important, we are 30% short of teachers. I, you know, there are schools, the student has the sub for the whole year. Okay, so same point, the rezoning is not just simply draw a line. It's if we want a high quality education, how we actually to improve that, that can make the, 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 the rezoning really reach to our goal, I think the board really need to uh, think about it, that. I basically just give us two examples to want to follow following work, like how we actually seriously efficiently. Yeah. But thank you for listening. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, David. And we can save some more time if other citizens would like to speak, if you would get behind this gentleman and then we can just move right forward. All right, my name's Darren. We're here in the High Springs District. Darren. Arterburn. And I hear all this talk about, you know, I've listened to some of the other meetings where he talked about portables and all this kind of stuff about the money, about structures and new schools. Ironically, I graduated in high school in 1983. <laughs> and the school I went to no longer exists. And when I decided to build a new high school, the same thing was talked about, about having the money to do so. It's called a school bond referendum. That's how money is raised in order to build facilities and new schools and that sort of thing. And I've never heard that talked about any of the, any of the meetings or I not hear anything about the budget and stuff like that about school bond referendums. That's how you earn and raise money to build schools and facilities. And like my wife just said, you know, you're not building schools out there in the F rated schools and you know, like I said, the same reason they're, they're moving out here. My stepdaughter has an IEP, and, he, and finally the IEP is working, and her dog and grades are coming up, and she's getting a better education. You go rezoning and send her off to a dog and effort at school, you're gonna set her education back tremendously. And it's just because you wanna rezone. So you need to really consider more about vamping up the dog in schools that have higher ratings and, you know, and use the school bond referendum, referendum, make money and get money to add to those facilities and get the trite teachers and that sort of stuff or do something about the F rated schools. You know, that's where your problem is. And you're gonna hear that, and you've heard that from all these people who don't want their kids going to an F rated school because you guys aren't doing anything to do anything about those schools. And now you are redoing the lines and send uh, students that have an IEP or whatever to an F rated school. Well, you know, so everybody out here will fight that tooth and nail. You know, and there is such a thing as courts and lawsuits to keep that from happening. So just consider that real heavily when you make your decisions. Thank you so much for your comments. Hi, my name is Sharon Martinson. I am. Um, wanted to echo what most people were saying, but I think a rumor control frequently asked question page would be great because I know for our community, the rumor is K through five and six through eight. So is that true? I've not heard that and we really don't talk But I've heard it mentioned in meetings. You don't want community schools which to me, what are we gonna do? And then what is the plan to fix these schools? Where's your plan? You just wanna uproot everybody? Sorry, I'm so aggravated because you sit here and you guys have done nothing, nothing in the years you've been in office but mask and mask and mask and, and shoot people up with shots and everybody wants that. No, we don't want this either. So please think about that. We moved here for a reason. It's so frustrating that not one school board member that I know of has ever stepped foot into High Springs Community School. Thank you, thank you for that. But not before you, have you, have you? 
Mick Neely, have you? Has Tina Certain? Our rep's not even here tonight. Do you guys all know that? <laughs> this is a joke. You guys need to fix the real problems, and it's not rezoning. I really appreciate your comments. Thank you so much. Anyone else? If not, Mrs. Johnson. Again, I do want to thank you all for coming out tonight. This is not your last opportunity to provide input. Take advantage of the special email box that we have to accept rezoning input. Keep checking that website. Again, that's sbac.edu slash rezoning. We will be updating that on a regular basis throughout this process. Thank you very much for being here and have a safe trip home.